Hey, hello, welcome. This video is going to have a look at the Phillips curve in the Nairu, which is examining the relationship between inflation and unemployment. This is going to try and simplify what is a pretty complicated topic. And for example, in a economics textbook like this one is a full chapter of the book, chapter 18, the trade-off with inflation and unemployment. Let's simplify it down though for the HSC course. So this links to our syllabus to the unemployment learn about on the Nairu, the non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment, as well as applying economic skills in the next topic on economic issues, where we need to explain how governments are restricted in their ability to simultaneously achieve economic objectives. And we've got to look at hypothetical and real world economic issues and trade-offs. This is what we're doing. So the Phillips curve is this curve here, and it shows an inverse relationship between unemployment rate and the rates of wage rises. It was found through the study of a Kiwi bloke called Phillips, uh, and he actually looked at the rates of wage increases and the unemployment rate, but we can extrapolate this to talk about inflation in place of wage rises. We can kind of um, take some of his finding and simplify it to apply to the inflation rate. So what it shows at point A, we have higher unemployment, but lower inflation. And then as unemployment decreases, so say down from 6% to 3%, inflation will rise. So inflation moves in this instance from two to 5%. So as unemployment reduces, which is great, that's what we want to do. We want to lower unemployment as low as we can, we're going to see that this problem occurs, that inflation rises. So in the short run, there is a trade-off between unemployment and inflation. And as the unemployment rate drops, inflation rises. So what does this mean? So lower unemployment, we know uh, will bring us higher GDP and output. We want lower unemployment, we want to reduce this level of unemployment, but lower unemployment can lead to higher demand and will tend to drive up prices. So as more people have jobs, more people have money to spend and disposable income, it will drive up aggregate demand, more people will purchase goods and services, and it will drive inflation. So it's good for the economy, but it will drive up the CPI inflation. So therefore, governments may struggle to achieve both low inflation and low unemployment simultaneously. They need to balance the two. And we can see that they generally, especially two areas here on the graph, this is our inflation rate here. When we generally have a higher inflation rate, we'll have a lower unemployment rate. And then as unemployment increases, inflation decreases. So they tend to move against each other. So like we just said, there's a trade-off for policymakers here. We want to achieve low inflation, so between two to 3% CPI. That is one of the RBA's first goals from the Reserve Bank Act. They want to maintain the stability of the currency of Australia, so they want low inflation, and they also want the maintenance of full employment. But what is full employment? Does that mean everyone that's looking for a job is employed and every single person has a job? No, that's what we're gonna see. So leads us to this concept of the Nairu. So the Nairu is the non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment. It refers to the level of unemployment at which there is no cyclical unemployment. So for example, this is where the economy is at full employment. So to simplify this down, the, full, the level of full employment is also the natural rate of unemployment, and that's our Nairu. So there's no cyclical unemployment at this rate. But even when this economy or any economy is experiencing full employment, there's always gonna be some of these other types of unemployment. There's still gonna be some frictional, seasonal, structural, and hardcore unemployment at the Nairu or at the natural rate of unemployment there won't be cyclical unemployment. And what we can see on the graph here is that at, as unemployment drops, there's going to be a point here at our Nairu estimated to be about 4.5 to 5% unemployment rate. If unemployment goes below that, inflation will start to creep up. So 
when unemployment falls below the Nauru, more economic growth will start to drive up wages as businesses compete for existing workers. So all the best workers, all the good workers, uh, all the workers that have the um, skills that match the jobs, they're already employed. So in order to get those workers, the businesses need to take them from other businesses. They need to um, raise their wages to try and compete for them and kind of pinch them from other businesses. So at this point as well, normal macroeconomic policy, normal macro uh, fiscal or monetary policy, which would increase aggregate demand, AD, will only cause further inflation. So we can't use just normal policy to increase aggregate demand and try and lower unemployment and boost growth because inflation will start to rise once we're at or below the Nairu. We need to use other policies. So what we can do is we can lower the Nairu. If it's estimated to be about four and a half to 5%, which is, it's actually at a bit of a lower point here, as you can see on the graph, our Nairu has actually been dropping and we'll see that on another graph in a sec. We want to keep lowering that Nairu. So there's more capacity uh, to have lower unemployment without inflation. So policymakers aim to lower the Nairu to grow GDP with less inflation. Expansionary macroeconomic policy can boost demand, but it will drive up inflation. Instead, microeconomic policy should be used to reduce the other types of unemployment. So they would aim to improve structural, frictional, uh, seasonal and hardcore unemployment. To do this, they want to improve the functioning of the labour market. So some suggestions could be improving policies to retrain and reskill workers. So um, workers who have been, been become structurally unemployed, um, what policies can we use to help their skills to match the jobs that are now needed? So to retrain them and reskill them in other areas. Maybe it's to encourage the participation of workers who have left the workforce and become discouraged. Maybe it's to reduce the hurdles for people who um, have disabilities. So improve uh, the capacity of the work for, of the workplace to um, have people with disabilities able to um, still work. That would be excellent and improve our, um, lower the Nairu and improve our workforce participation. So we can see here, this is the treasury's estimate of the Nairu. We can see that it's been getting lower and it's estimated to be around four and a half to 5%. Um, last June in 2019, um, Governor Philip Lowe said that he estimated around four and a half percent, I think, in a speech then. Um, and we'll see that sometimes our unemployment is well above the Nairu. So we've got a lot of cyclical unemployment there. But then there's other times where the unemployment employment rate drips and drops below the Nairu. And so normal macroeconomic policy isn't going to work here. We need to look at other policies instead. Okay, so what about stagflation? So stagflation, we might have heard of before. It's a combination of infl inflation plus unemployment plus low growth. So it's a portmanteau. It's of stagnant economy and inflation. Portmanteau is when you just chuck two words together, stagnant and inflation, we get stagflation. Um, another portmanteau is uh, brunch, paratroopers, so breakfast and lunch, just jamming stagnant and inflation together. Obviously a really bad situation. And it goes against what we've just said should occur on the Phillips curve. This happened in the 1970s due to uh, the OPEC oil supply shocks. So a big jump in the price of oil and caused recessions um, in different places around the world. And you can see here that this is when we had increasing CPI and still had uh, increasing unemployment. So they went up together and there was two different spikes here in the early 70s and later on. So this forced a rethink of this relationship and policy implications, uh, policies to lower inflation will further slow the economy and worsen unemployment. We couldn't just use 
the normal um, policies to deal with this because we had both inflation and unemployment at the same time. And whatever you did to try and fix one would worsen the other. So Milton Friedman comes in here. So himself, as well as another economist, Edmund Phelps, had already argued against the Phillips curve before this stagflation situation in the 1970s and said that you could have high inflation and high unemployment. And this situation kind of um, vindicated his ideas. It showed that this correlation, the Phillips curve correlation, is just a short-term trade-off and that, as always in economics, the actual relationships in the real world are more complex than that. It's more complicated. Um, it's only a short term or a short run situation in the long run. Um, things are going to be different. So instead, policymakers should consider the Nairu and we will focus more on looking at the Nairu and ways to use different policy, uh, whether we're at the Nairu or above it. So to reduce unemployment in the long run, instead, we need to focus on supply side or micro economic policies. So to sum up, we've said what the Phillips curve is, we've said what the Nairu is, and we said that we need to understand that above the Nairu, we'll use different policies to when we are below the Nairu, and we need to have an understanding of those. All right, thanks for listening.